let's start off with how many people are playing games and in the gaming community. So there's 2.2 billion worldwide. Uh, just this last year in the UK, there are over 8 million people have played the game FIFA. The best players in the world are, uh, are becoming more, more well known. Mm -hmm. At the same time, a lot of the talent's still developing. So in this world, in this competition, the EPL competition that Gfinity sort of designed and developed, you're finding new players, finding new heights and new levels. But I think it's innate human talent that we, we want to identify ourselves and see where we pit ourselves against the very best. That world continues to develop. Has everybody bought into it easily? I think it, again, varies by levels. I think some people see it as a marketing exercise. Some people see it as an investment exercise and some of the individual... What do you see it as? I, I think that we're in the middle of a cultural revolution. I think that this... Is it sport? Is, um, I, I, w the, the definition of sport has to be... That's a, that's a completely different discussion and it would go down a very different pathway. Mm -hmm. I think if we look at it as competitive gaming um, and, and we look at it through the lens of somebody's trying to outplay somebody else and be better than somebody else, then I think we have a competitive landscape and everybody wants to see how good they are in that landscape. Do you have any female e-gamers? Do you know there aren't enough is, is the answer to that. Um, the great thing about the gaming world though is it's, there are no barriers. Um, this is not a sport that has been gender specific, although there are, happens to be more males playing. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to encourage more of that, but we are seeing more, of, more and more of the competitive gamers at the highest level, starting to introduce the females. 